turn on the uh, phone lines as well. And um, uh, also, uh, well, you can come over here. I'm trying to get some. I have to always have to get certain things working here. Oops. I have to get certain things working. And uh, it takes a little bit of me to do it. Uh, but I, then I do it, and it's fine, and we're ready to go. Okay, we are ready. Oh, no, 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 Just now what happened? in the middle. Here, there we go. I know I'm trying to, I, I, I have to, I have to have that there so I can you see the picture. No, okay, but no, it's, it's fine. They'll no, it's, hear, it's they right can hear you. you. I'm telling that you, they can hear you. Just move in closer so they can see you. The lines are open, so what you get to do is you get to call we're, we're both, both wearing red, red. <laughs> and we're both wearing, uh, yours is the Olympic team and mine is uh, U.S. Open. U.S. Open. She gets me a U.S. Open t-shirt every year. And, and a hat. And she gets the, this is an expensive one. It was $10 more because it was the it, soft cotton. The soft cotton. God you forbid my little honey should have rough cotton t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, our first caller tonight is uh, somebody who doesn't call us that often, but he called tonight. Hi, Vernon. Hey, Vernon. Am I yellow today? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're yellow, but it'll. I'm sure it'll change. It'll, it'll warm up. You know. Donald, Donald fact, Trump tan. Let me show everybody um, uh, uh, the the uh, yellow man here. Looks like Donald Trump's tan, doesn't it? Huh? His face. It looks Wait like man. Donald Trump's tan. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. What's the problem here? You got an echo hmm. there somewhere. Hmm. I got a problem here. Uh oh, here we go. Again. Oh, I can't. Do I have to hang up and call back? Oh no! no. Oh no! No, I there. There we go. I'm 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 sorry, folks. I was looking at the wrong picture. There we uh, go. There we go. Okay. Doctor Pepper. Diet. Oh, you got uh, you got Diet Pepper. Doctor Pepper. Doctor Pepper. Oh, here, Rob Alfano's. Hey, Rob. A second. Wait, he's not here yet. Oh. Anyway, um, um, that's all his uh, short wave stuff in the oh, background. Oh wow! Look at all that stuff. And he also he's the guy that does the code. You know? Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, wow, let me see here. Is Rob. A and, uh, a a a and there Scott? we go. And Scott. And hey Rob. Scott. Hey Wait Rob. Uh, hello. Hey. Hello Rob. Hey and Vernon. All of a sudden your picture isn't yellow anymore. Oh that's right. Now you're normal. Now you're normal. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to all... warm up uh, on you. How are all you people tonight? We're feel free. I hear. Yeah, we're feel free tonight. Oh right. <laughs> So feel free to speak. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was my line. I was going to say, feel free to grab the key next to you. <laughs> yes, yes. And, of course, there's Rob. The hey, Rob. The vo I was thinking tonight as I played one ad after another with your voice on it. You're, you, he's the voice of Gabnet. He has a great voice. Yeah. You really do. I'm very lucky to have him do these things. Yes, you are. And I just write them to him, and he reads them, and then I put them together. You know, that's the way we do it now because he's working. I'm <laughs> having Mike envy though, Rob. Huh? I'm having Mike envy. That's a nice uh, mic. You know, that's a nice mic, yeah. It looks this official. Oh, for show because quite frankly, it's a lot of slapback. Is there? You hear it? No, I don't hear it. You probably hear it. I, I heard it. I hear it. Well, wait, hold on a second. Let me just uh, kill you, uh, your audio there for a little bit. And now, is there slapback now? Check, check, check. Yeah. There still is? Mm -hmm. We don't hear uh, it on this end. Uh, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it'll go I was gonna away. say, this mic is uh, and not so much to envy. This is a Samsung mic. It's okay. Yeah. It looks, it looks official. Hey, aloha. Hey. Aloha. It's How you doing, folks? James Lee in Hawaii, and now we're Jason. being joined by Jason. Man, this is like the old days where hey, they just guys. started calling yep. like crazy. Aloha. There yeah, QSL, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, Jason. How's it going? Yeah, turn on your camera. If it isn't on already, there we go. And we'll be able to see Jason in a second. Boy, this is wow. uh, this is quite a quite night. Everybody just jumps in really fast. No, Phil, thank God. <laughs> Let's call. Yay. <laughs> He's probably too embarrassed because of all the Trump revelations today. This is crazy. <laughs> well, they're, they're, coming, they're coming pretty fast. They're coming at a Cosby speed. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. But you know, I am kind of uh, on the same point that he said. Why is it just coming out now? Why not? I'll tell you why. Uh, why didn't I... it come out when he first started running? Why didn't I'll, it come I'll, out? When I'll, he won I'll the explain primary? why the uh, why it's coming out now. Nobody fired the starting gun. 
But yep. the starting gun was fired by Anderson Cooper the other night when he asked him if he had ever done this kind of behavior, and he said no. All of a sudden, those people who know it to not be true came forward. Before that, this was never an issue. This wasn't an issue before last Friday when the uh, when Tapes. the Access Hollywood tape came out. Mm -hmm. That's right. You it's know. one week today. And yeah. I knew, I knew the minute that Anderson Cooper asked that question, within a couple of days, we were going to start hearing from women who said, uh-uh. Oh, yes, he did. You know. There's one woman I was listening to tonight said, as soon as I heard him say, deny Anderson's question, I jumped off my couch in anger. I'm not going to let him get away with this. Yeah. And, that's, and then it becomes cathartic in a way because I'm going to support her. She came out and I'm going to, you know what? I need to come out too and say it because I'm going to support the other women who have come out and given the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't look like crackpots. Yeah. Yes. It's, Scott. It's, it's also a lot like Roger Ailes. I mean, who believed Gretchen Carson to be to, at the yeah. beginning, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Carlson. Yeah. And then the other women at uh, Fox started coming out and saying the same thing. You know, or Bill did he deny it? I don't know if Roger denied it, but I don't think he ever. Uh, I I don't think he ever admitted to it, and I don't think I don't remember him e denying it either. Yeah. I, I think, think he he's was ever he, talked about it. Well, he was out so fast he didn't get to say anything anyway. He got forty yeah. million. He left. He's yeah. he got his forty million dollars and left. You know, that and uh, him and Trump are going to start a new sexual harassment news network. <laughs> <laughs> SHNN. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Jason, since I explained that to you, does that make sense? That that's why it's happening now. I, I, to a point, but like I said, I, I guess I. It still is kind of uh, you know it's so convenient that it's happening. Yeah, I have no doubt that he did this kind of stuff, but. It's just it's so convenient that it's now. This is also, the October let, surprise. Let me let me let me say to you that you, let's say you are running for president and you've got something on the other candidate. Are you going to bring it out in May? No. Just like we're not going to release no, we're, we're not going to release was... movies until December so they can be eligible for the Academy Awards. Or they weren't going to release uh, uh, Clinton's tapes until now. Yeah. For the but same that's reason. My thing. If I was a woman who was sexually harassed by somebody, I think I would come out right away and say that I was sexually harassed by this person. A couple of them did. Well, many of them, many of them didn't want to. Uh, the one, <laughs> one that came out today, I think from the Washington Post or whatever, they had to go seek her out because they had heard the story from a third party that she had told them. And they went to her, and she initially didn't want to. And then as the thing kept going on, she started getting madder and madder and said, okay, I'll talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that one. That's a good story. Yeah. That's a, I, I, that's a good uh, uh, testimony. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, and uh, what happened 30 years ago, uh, you usually didn't make a big deal out of it in those days because nobody would believe you. They believed the guy first before they believed the woman. That's right. You know? We're living in a little more enlightened age today. Did you hear what uh, Trump's son said on uh, the Howard Stern show two years ago? He made a comment to the effect of if you're in business and if you're a woman in business and you can't handle that kind of talk, then you shouldn't be in the business world. Maybe you should be a kindergarten teacher. Jesus, like father, like son. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Is that the one that goes out and steal, you know, cuts, cuts off, off tails, the tails of, the, of, of giraffes? The giraffes? Yeah. Both of them, hun. Yeah. Both of them. You have pictures of them with every yeah animal but you know i mean i think that uh, uh and i think this is the the, the oh there's the little doggy it's yeah it's, it's rosie it's tv night so everybody can yep. see uh rosie rosie, uh, yeah, rosie. The, oh that's a cute dog uh, yeah <laughs> my dog's already gone to bed lounge <laughs> Mine's going to go well, to bed soon. Oh, excuse it's me. over 80 <laughs> degrees and 90% humidity, so they're taking it easy. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? We're here in the jungle. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, she looks wiped out. Yeah. Uh, uh, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, uh, and I said this last night, exclude all these women. Forget about them for a second. Think about last Friday. Think about the Access Hollywood tape. Now, that one isn't, it isn't in, in, uh, uh, in doubt. He said those things, yeah. you know, and that was his demeanor. So, you know, given that. 
Hey, but that was just locker room talk. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At 70? <laughs> yeah. Locker room talk to me, as I said, was, hey, did you have a good workout? <laughs> you know, but uh, apparently he goes in there and goes, hey, did you see the tits on that broad? <laughs> you know. But I mean, it, look. Uh, and, it, and that would be fine as, hey, did you see the tits on that broad? Not, hey, I went around and grabbed the tits on that broad. Right. <laughs> you know something? I will excuse him only to this extent that I, he and I are, we're not the same age, but we're close. Okay. We were brought up in the same eras together. Uh, and, and, in those days, you're, the, the attitude towards women was completely different. You know, it has modified over the years, uh, and now uh, you just absolutely don't do that kind of thing. But, you know, he and his father also was a total fucking asshole, you know? And um, I'm sure this was a learned and taught attitude. Uh, and, My father and, likes son. Yeah, yeah and exactly. so... You know, while I am not going to excuse his behavior, I understand why it exists. Well, you know, what, though, I don't know about that because I think, you know, there, there's a, you know, you grow and change with the times. Many of us have mm -hmm. things that were acceptable 20, 30 years ago are not acceptable today. And you adjust and change. Right. But not Donald Trump. No. See, my thing is, I think he's always been a sleazebag yeah. right, since and day one. And I don't understand how so many people in this country, this day and age, voted for him or putting their support behind him to get him where he is now. It, it's just it's ridiculous. Well, I mean, it, it's ridiculous just, you know, that he has had no other experience in politics. You know, even a Ronald Reagan, who was a movie actor, had been co governor of California. He had had some... Um, uh, uh, but he's had experience. He's had experience of paying off politicians. Well, every <laughs> every industry that he was in, whether it was the casinos, whether it was his foundation, everything he you know took it right to the ground. I mean, what, well, what foundation? His foundation. Yeah, I know, but yeah, what foundation? Exactly. You know, I mean, it's he, a sham. Well, it, it, is a it sham. was used as a sham. Yeah, it was yeah. used as a sham to buy twenty thousand dollar portrait, portrait of himself, of himself. And, put and, it, and put it in Mar-a-Lago. And he used the money to pay off in some of his legal suits. I yes, I believe yeah. which so. is illegal. Yeah, you know, he talks about putting Hillary well, in jail. The, the, uh, he the, should go to jail for the, that. The, the attorney general of the state of New York has been is still, I think, looking into the into the um, uh, foundation. Trump Foundation to see how the that money was spent. Because number one, he didn't put any money into it. Everybody else put money into it, but he didn't. And then he bought lovely little pictures of himself. You know. Um, How's the mood out in Hawaii? Nobody gives a shit, do they out there? They just you're That's too... true. That all we care about is that football team of ours, which keeps losing against San Jose State. <laughs> at least on at least on the uh, networks, they show up as a blue state. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they do. That's true. Yeah. And uh, Vernon, our civil defense group, you can Google our civil defense Hawaii and uh, see our frequencies on HF. Uh, okay. And also two meters, uh, since you you could probably copy some of our transmissions. We're amateur okay. radio operators on the side, QSL. Wow. So you're, you're Dottie, 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 Dottie. You. you do the same thing he does then. Wow. Yeah, I play with you. Know, Dottie, I Dottie, I, Dottie, I, Dottie, I, Dottie. I, <laughs> I, I, can you can you do Morse code too? Yeah, we do a little bit. Of that. Yeah. I don't I don't do a lot of CW, Vern. but uh, you know if you can rap, you can you can do CW. You know that, Bert. Come on. <laughs> I'm gonna say good night. Good night. Mm. Okay. Good night, Eddie. Good, good night. We'll see you. Bye, Marjorie. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Is she wearing pants? Huh? Yeah, she's is wearing she... pants tonight. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, uh, so if you got your little key there tonight, Vernon, could you give us a little play, a little song uh, for it's us? It's over on the other oh. unit. It's, oh, okay. it's on the other desk. Oh, okay. I could probably move over there, but... Nah, uh, you don't have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I heard something today that I didn't quite... I didn't quite understand, Alex. Okay. It was on. It was on. Uh, it was on Sirius Radio. Actually, I was listening to you know, classic vinyl, and the DJ on there said, uh, "When you read the instructions, you get education. When you don't, you get experience." Uh, I I think that that's true. <laughs> yeah. 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 Including an electric shock occasionally. <laughs> I thought about that. I went, mm, "What?" 
Well, I, I, how many here read instructions when they get something new? You do, Rob? I read instructions. Yeah. I'll put it together. Yeah, that's his job. No, well, I'm not talking about like Ikea furniture. I'm talking oh. about you get a new <laughs> stereo. For no, instance. no, I don't read instructions. Right. You, you learn how to do it I yourself. The, I, I hate the fact that it's a book this thick and only this much of it is for you because the rest of it's yeah. in 25 other languages. Well, I mean, I got, uh, I got this new... Uh, there we go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. a there. GoPro. Yeah, the new GoPro. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I tried to learn it without looking at the instructions. And then I had to start looking at the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you figure, yeah, at some point you look at the instructions because you want to make sure you're really taking advantage of the, you know, that you don't want to miss a feature. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Well, as so. long as they're this small. Everything is kind of jam-packed in there. All the different switches and everything are, are all jam-packed. Now, they've done a better job of it now than with the old one because I can, I can change uh, uh, field of view and everything right from the main screen while I'm using it, where before you kind of had to turn it off and you had to go into it and a whole bunch of other things. So it's better, but uh, I'm, I'm still having to go back and look at a manual now and then. But when I start out, I just play with it. Yes. You know, and it I figure the patience, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you don't want to sit there and read the manual. <laughs> but I, when I was a kid, that's part I, of the fun. I, I, yeah, when I was a kid, I figured it out. I did something that to this day I still worry about is that if I don't read the manual, I might ruin something. And let me give you the example uh, my parents bought me a magic trick set, you know, the magic sets, you know, they have them like crazy. And one of them was this little, um, uh, um, um thing where you put coins on a coin under a walnut and then somebody can move them around like crazy and then you can tell them which one the uh, coin is under and what I noticed when I got it was it was the set wasn't perfect because this coin had a piece of hair stuck to it so I ripped off the hair and then, <laughs> when, then when I read the instructions it said look for the hair under the walnut and so now I tried to start gluing it back on, and nothing would ever glue that piece of hair back onto the coin. So ever <laughs> since then, I, my whole thing in life is, when I get something new, try not to rip the hair off the coin. <laughs> <laughs> because you can do that, you know. Well, part, part of the equipment that's back there on my bench, James, is a linear yes. amplifier. Oh, I, good. I, I got the manual out the other night because I'm going to try to get it working and I don't want to burn it up. So <laughs> can you crank up 500 watts? Uh, if I if I connect that that amplifier, it's a Drake L4B, so I can probably get about eight or nine hundred watts out of it. Oh, you never transmit on Super Bowl Sunday, then? Huh? <laughs> uh, well, well, you know the, the days, take on everybody. <laughs> the, day, the days of television interference have gone bye bye. I mean, back when I was first involved in it, you had to worry about television interference because the way television sets were made. Uh, the signals you were using could, and and har uh, the uh, frequency. Uh, what am I trying? To, harmonics yeah, could, harmonics. Get, it, could, could get into the TV. Yeah. Yeah, now they don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's all digital. Is right. The reason why? Yeah. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I had an old black and white TV. It was a UHF or whatever. Where you had the two knobs. Yeah. And then you turn it to the UHF, and you go down to the other knob. Yeah, I could turn it to like channel eighty. And I'd sit there and I'd spin my antenna to pick up CB signals. And I'd just sit there and be able to listen to CBs on my TV. Well, that was in the days when CB was more active up on UHF rather than down on 27 megahertz. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're, you're losing me. <laughs> me too. I, I have no idea what you're <laughs> talking well, about. I, I'm going to have to say aloha. I've got to take care of our rat problem. You know, we've got our... Uh, Avocados oh, no. here, and they're dropping, and uh, oh, you got to lease them up because here come the rats for them, and you know then we get problems. Yeah, every time uh, I talk James, to you, uh, every time I talk to you, you have to leave because you got to go kill something. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But we have we have these electronic uh, rat traps we use over here. They zap them. You don't want the the, uh, the the whole, yeah. the Hawaiian uh, you know chamber of commerce or whatever. You you wouldn't make a good spokesperson. Not at all. Not in any way, shape, or form. Well, this is this is Country Hilo. No, nobody, nobody's tuning in in Country Hilo. Come on, so come on. Jay, well, listen, yeah. we need somebody to replace you with this crowd here tonight. 
Uh, well, so, I'll get the, you can get Honolulu. Somebody in Honolulu will come in. You know, um, so where's Renee tonight? We need uh, Renee. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. She'll do the good PR. She she's on good. your big island, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so anyway, trouble. guys, folks, okay. take it easy. Have a good nice night. night. Bye-bye, yeah. James, or rest Bye-bye. of the day over there. Uh, that's James Lee, ladies and gentlemen, who is in, uh, in, uh, on the big island of Hawaii. And as you can see, we're down to four people now, so we need more, more, more. Okay. I and wanted to ask him to send me send me some avocados. Oh yeah, yeah. They look good, didn't yeah. they? Look like a good avocado. Yeah, man. They look like that a nice like one. Fresh out of the grocery store. Well, yeah. it's, it's it's paradise except for the rats and the <laughs> bugs and the mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes and the humidity and the you know. And the bog. What a god awful place to live. So my mom is down in Monterey, Mexico, right now, visiting her aunt, mm-hmm. and uh, she's complaining about the cockroaches and the mice and the ants and all this and that at her aunt's house and uh so i was asking her you know her aunt is also 94 years old wow. so i was asking her is it because she's getting old and not able to take care of her what, house you, what are you implying fine. the cockroaches are attracted to old people i guess yeah that's Uh-oh. what you got <laughs> but she was saying those both because she's you know down in almost tropical <clears throat> climate you know it's warm and the the houses down there are a lot more open, so it allows more of the farmers to get in. They have screens on their windows. No, they got bars. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's a, a, in Mexico. Yeah, but that's the same way it is, like uh, in Singapore and in uh, uh, and in uh, the Philippines. I'm like, how come you guys don't put screens up? I'm sitting in uh, somebody's house. I was in Singapore once, and I was sitting in my. I was going out with this girl from Singapore at one point. And we're sitting in her her sister's living room, beautiful house, and there are lizards crawling all over the place. And I'm like, what? Oh, you've never, yeah, we have, you know, that's good. They kill all the bugs. I said, maybe if you put screens up, you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah, that's true. And you wouldn't have the lizards either. Yeah. Yeah, but lizards are kind of benign. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, no, they're not. They're not creepy. Suits. They're not particularly creepy. Yeah. No, they're kind of creepy when you accidentally step on one or something, or you know. I don't know you want to share your bed with one? I mean, yeah. you know, you go up in the middle of the night and there's a lizard on your bed. Well, here's here. I I used to have a very stupid cat. We lived in the we lived kind of in the country. We lived in San Anselmo, Marin County, across from San Francisco, and out in the garden, at a certain time of year, there were, there were a lot of lizards. They were just, you know, running around like crazy. Uh, lizards have detachable tails, okay? And uh, <laughs> the, my cat would constantly try to catch them by grabbing a hold of their tail. And, of course, they would detach the tail. And all over the backyard, we found lizard tails because this cat was so fucking stupid and didn't grab the whole body of the lizard. Never learn the trick. But was the cat stupid or was the lizard smart that evolved to lose lose its tail? I, I think my cat was pretty stupid. <laughs> pretty sweet cat, but stupid. One time I was in Mexico and I went down to, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I went to the toilet and I had to go number two. And I go to sit down and some just caught my eye. I don't know what, but then I stood up and I looked down there. There was this, it was, I don't think it was an iguana, but there was this lizard that was as big as a toilet was sitting in there. It was just, it, wow. it scared the crap out of me. I believe we've been, jo- <laughs> I, I, I believe we've been joined by Ted, right, Ted? Hey, you got it. I see. I can tell it's the phone number. I remembered the phone number from last night, Ted. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you you requested a call, so I'm good. I'm in, good, I'm... good. We can use more too. You know, last night we had a full house at one point, which was uh, which was kind of good. You know what? Uh, in all this talk of Trump and his, and we should got to be fair about this. And and his. Oh, here comes uh, Tony. Okay, we're being joined by Tony. Hello, Tony. Don't forget to turn on your camera, uh, sure. especially because it's TV night, and we want to scare everybody away. <laughs> Um, uh, we, you know, we've been talking about Trump and his peccadillos and his, uh, snatch grabbing. Okay. But this seems to have kind of put on the back burner 
all the tapes being released by scumbag, uh, what's his name, over in uh, you know, WikiLeaks, um, Julian Assange. Uh, and we've kind of like uh, not been really, people haven't really been discussing that. And Now, could it be because of the sheer volume of the things that are being released and that nobody really wants to read them all? <laughs> or, or, or it's not as... There's as nothing else. Not salacious. Huh? It's not as salacious. Yeah. So I thought I heard something about Clinton has a black baby or something. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's this kid oh, claiming oh, to oh, be his oh. son. There's this kid claiming to be his son. Uh, I, I heard looks exactly like him, which I, 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 I've seen pictures of the kid. He doesn't look like Bill Clinton. <laughs> you know. Uh, which would surprise me, but still, what is that? I don't know. Everything's coming out. This is some campaign. Oh, this is this is the dirtiest, stupidest campaign of all time. Wouldn't you I'm even miss it? Now, now, Ted is the is the official right designated right winger for tonight. Thank uh, you, thank you. Yeah, uh, we, would you say that uh, that have you seen the thing about Bill Clinton's uh, love child? Google on this. Black he, love he, child. Uh, but he uh, he doesn't want to take a DNA test, so right there, yeah. Yeah. That right there said it's probably not true. What, what the, who doesn't want, oh, the kid doesn't want to take a DNA test. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Oh. But, you know, they, uh, you every day I t go over to Drudge and they got a picture of this kid and they're going, uh, you know, is this Clinton's love child? They're hoping something will stick. And if she just lays back and doesn't say anything till election day, she's going to do just fine. They're, you know that old saying, you throw enough shit against the wall, some of it's going to stick. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you, you, here, here, here's where I think, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Trump is so stupid. Don't react to this stuff. Because when you react to this stuff, you simply inflame it. And, and it's just, you know, he feels compelled to get up there on stage and vilify these women and to, to deny it emphatically. All you have to say is, there are a lot of rumors going on around about me. Don't believe them. It's an election year. Now, here's how I'm going to solve the economy. Would you agree, Ted, that that would be the best course of action? Of course. I mostly always agree with you, Alex, almost all the time. <laughs> well, but I'm liberal and you're, you're conservative. How do you agree with me all the time? I just, our biases are different, our values are a little different, but uh, I do agree with your logic and uh, your yeah. assessments on things. Yeah. Well, always th have. Thank you. I've known you. Thank you. You're the just kind of person I like a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jason. Has it come out yet? Because didn't Trump say that he had evidence that the, was it the lady from Time or People Magazine, whatever it was, that yeah. accused yeah. him of doing this? Has it come out yet what oh, his yeah. evidence yeah. was yeah. that he it, had it that, came that was out, fake? It came out late today. What was it? Can you hold on to your seat? Yeah. Some guy who said he was on the airplane and he saw what was going on and he has a he has a uh, flawless memory. No. Except, Jeez. except, except. I can't remember what year it was. <laughs> <laughs> so that was. That, I got a photographic memory, but he couldn't remember what year it happened. That was Trump's empirical yeah. uh, proof that he didn't do it. And and the guy, the the person who saw them at Mar a Lago, was his butler, who is still his butler. Who so, Trump's butler? Yeah. So you think Trump's oh. butler is going to go? Well, I saw it, and man, he had his tongue down her throat. He had a. See, he, the butler travels with them too. That's a, that's pretty good. Well, I mean, I think you know he had, he's had a butler for years now. So if they go on vacation, he goes. And that's pretty. And good. he butles. Yeah, he butles. You don't want to have to have a new butler while you're on vacation. You want to know what you know. I, 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 I would never have a butler unless I could find one somewhere who legitimately was named Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, 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 so why do you think that you know the uh, the uh, WikiLeaks stuff isn't as it's just not sexy, right? Yep. It's too much. Yeah, nothing new. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been they've been uh, raking Hillary and Bill over the coals for twenty years, so none of this stuff is new. Oh, longer than that. Go back to Whitewater. You know, I mean, from the day he got into office, they were dogging him. You know, and trying to find something on him, 
and they, you know, he was, you know, he was Teflon. There's no question about it. Um, but uh, they've been trying to get those two. Those two have been the most, I think, of all the people in politics. Those two people have been the most attacked of any two people in politics. Would I be wrong in saying that? You know, and yet nothing, they never made anything stick. You know, they tried to make white water stick, didn't stick. They even tried to make the whole, you know, the whole uh, sex scandal that wound up in impeachment, which is only a trial. Uh, uh, they tried to make that into something. It, it, he got out of that. You know, so they, they've, 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 they're, they're, ba they're, they've been battling for years, and this is just another battle to them. You know, and you just Alex, to answer your question, yeah. um, there is one thing she said that if Trump just stuck to it and didn't uh, didn't talk about anything else, it's a speech she gave in Brazil, where she said she someday would dream of open borders for the whole Western Hemisphere, and if it, you know if they concentrate hone in on that, uh, I think that will a lot of people in this country. I, I, you know, only because he's put the fear into them that this would necessarily be a bad thing. I think that what she was saying is she hoped the day would come when right. things were such that you could let anybody into this country through those If borders. the economic base was equal in every country, it yeah. wouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. but, exactly. But, you know, the, the problem... No, I don't know about that because terrorism is uh, being led by extremists and, and most of those Not in South America or Central America. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, terrorists aren't coming up from South America. No. They're coming from Canada, and t you can take that to the bank. You know, I was just watching something on uh, TV about uh, Islam, you know, and I'm sorry, you know, a lot of terrorists is coming from Islam, you know, the extremists from those religions, but... They showed where Islam is spreading. There is nothing in Central America and nothing in South America. You know, in North America, there was growth of Islam in every other continent and every country around the world, but not Southern and South America. Why is that, I okay. wonder? Could it be because the... Catholic. Uh, huh? Probably the Catholic religion is so strong down there. But that doesn't mean that uh, you couldn't get... Uh, people from ISIS and stuff infiltrating into into Mexico. The only reason why they say that they're going to do it is because they're kind of the same color, but it's it's so they're so different. They're not, you know, I don't think that they're welcome because of the the such strong belief in the Catholic religion and their culture. In Mexico, if there's a job opening, you have to fill it with somebody in that country. And you have to try basically anybody and everybody in that country to fill that job opening before you can let somebody from a foreign country in to do that job. United States, hey, you're a doctor? Come on in. We got a job for you. Well, they have these. What, what's the visa, but Rob? Do, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. Like a 401B or something. There's H1B. H1B. Yeah. And, and I knew a lot of guys <clears throat> in the tech world who came <clears throat> over from China and Yep. Japan and uh, but that's Korea. not because of anything other than just we don't have the skill set here. We do have the skill set. They don't want to pay for it. Exactly. No, 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 no. When they come here, when we offshore it there, you're right. But the H one B visa, those people coming in here, those people are getting paid. But when the H, no, they're not necessarily getting paid because oh, they're yeah. also getting well, it, they're it, getting threatened if you want to bitch about your wage. Yeah, We're I was going to I was going to say back I, to I was going to add that from. when I when I was working with CNET, uh, I was privy to a lot of this political stuff that was going on, and. Um, uh, these 401, what are they called again? 401? H1B. H1B visas. Uh, people would get them. They would come to this country. They would, you know, get a place to live and they would bring their families with them and everything. And then they were at the you and cry of, the, of, the, of their boss and whatever they wanted to wind up paying them because it was kind of a form of slavery because they didn't want to get kicked out services. of the country, yeah. you know. I didn't see that it, it, any place I ever worked where we, they brought in people like that. I didn't see that kind of treatment with it. And maybe I didn't know about it, but I yeah, worked with those people. I worked with people from India who were over for six months or eight months or whatever it was. 
Well, there's plenty of time where you have somebody from India who's doing what would be normally an $80,000 a year job, and they're being paid $40,000 a year. And the person finds out that it's an $80,000 a year job, and they want to up their pay, and then they say, you really? You know, you want to complain about this? We'll send you back. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just uh, say we don't need you anymore or whatever, and they have to have that job in order to stay here. That's the, the kind of visa That's they right. have. And so they are at the whim of that of that of their of their uh, employer, and um, uh, so I heard a lot of terrible things happening that way. But then everybody always still wants to blame the Mexican border. We have to put up a fence in order to keep all these illegals out. The number one source of illegal immigrants in this country is people staying over their legal visas. They came over here legally with a visa, and they're overstaying their welcome, basically. So Melania putting up Trump. a fence. Putting up Visa, the visas has, expire and they don't go home. Well, he, it, you know, uh, Trump, Trump has nothing to do that. Trump, to help that. Trump doesn't address uh, people from countries like England, France, the Netherlands, who maybe For come the over here and do time, exactly The number that. one country with illegals in our country was Poland, and they always were always bitching about Mexicans. It's not even Mexicans; it's people coming up from South America through Mexico, but Mexicans. They'd always blame the Mexicans, and it was for years and years and years, it was Polish people coming over here. You know, it was like Lenny Bruce uh, said in his act years ago, you know, we should have uh, brotherhood here in America. Uh, the Spanish, uh, oh. the uh, Mexican, the Indian, uh, the black. Uh, we should all get together and beat up on the Polacks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, in Nashville, they have a thing, Alex, where they live. When I was a kid, they used to call them And Polacks. I can say that because I'm part Polish. What? In Nashville... They have a section called Polak Alley. Ever since I was a kid, because all the Polish people would live there. And it really is yeah, all yeah. Polish. But yeah. Still called that? Yeah, yeah. It's still called that. So they live in Polak Alley. Well, my, fa my father, I think, Polish. was born in Poland. And I said, so are we Polish? He says, no, we're not Polish. We're Jewish. <laughs> uh, and and I used to say, well, what's the difference? He says, uh, uh, we're Jewish. Jew being Jew a Jewish Pole is different than being Polish. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, his attitude was a normal Polish person was stupid and, and was the kind of person that followed Hitler and, you know, <laughs> sent true. their best friends off to concentration camps. So he had a, he had, a, you take a Jew from World War II who had lived in Europe at one time, and man, I'm telling you, they're, they're feeling about it. My father's, on his deathbed, his dying words were, don't ever let the two Germanys get back together. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. He said, anytime you get a bunch of Germans together, they'll form a line and start marching. Oh, hey, look, they <laughs> did the uh, European Union and their control of the uh, currency. That's funny. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he oh, he hated the Germans. Oh, he was I just, just you know, well, I mean, most, most Jews did in this country because of what the Germans were doing to the Jews over there. But what I could never figure out is if we knew what was going on over there, why didn't we bomb the railroad tracks, taking people to the concentration camps? Because the people who built the railroad tracks didn't want you to bomb them. Yeah. Well, you know who was one of the biggest companies in the concentration camps, American companies? You said IBM. IBM, right? IBM, you got yeah. it, Scott. Oh, you said that, I read it. Yeah, yeah. IBM uh, sold them the punch card system so they could keep track of all the people in the concentration camps. Are you kidding? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Crap. You know, so. Oh, I know lots of trivia like that. Like, do you know, uh, um, uh, was it Nokia, right? The cell phone company? You know what Nokia started out as? What the company began as? Uh, they were a lumber company. And then... When they got out of lumber, they went into making galoshes. They were the number one galoshes maker in the world. And I've never been able to figure out, and I've tried to trace it, how they went from making galoshes to making cell phones. But they did. What do they make now? They, don't, they, they don't make galoshes with cell phones in them. Okay. <laughs> Maxwell Smart Shoe Phone. A smart Shoe Phone. <laughs> hey, is this not... not too far off, but do you know what uh, Kia started off as? 
uh, uh, uncomfortable furniture. Oh, not IKEA, just Kia. Uh, Kia, the car company. Oh, Kia, the car, the car company. company. Well, they're from Korea, right? South Korea. Yeah. yeah. They start out as like a TV, making TVs or something. Bicycles. Bicycles. But I say Kia stands for well, a killed in car or a killed in auto. Yeah, well, it, but the the, the 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 trip between being um, uh, making uh, bicycles and cars is kind of it's a there's a logic there. Rubber tires, tires, uh, um, gears, things that are mobile that get you from one place to another. But to go from lumber to galoshes to cell phones. Oh, come make on. How do you go from it? being a, uh, a grocery store to an electronics store? Well, that, that that's uh, uh, California. What? You're you're uh, are you, were you did you live in California at one point? No, I've heard you talk about oh, it. Enough. Oh, well, and there's a Texas place in California too. called Fry's Electronics. They are these huge super stores. I mean, they're huge. Um, in fact, the largest electronics store was a store that was built in Sacramento, and then Fry's bought it. But Fry's originally was a grocery store chain. And one day they decided to start selling computers. <laughs> Go figure, you know? And they became the biggest, one of the biggest outlets uh, there. Uh, does anybody watch Mr. Robot at all? I started, but I didn't get The last episode of Mr. Robot takes place right outside of a Fry's. Oh, really? Yeah. That's for the first couple of episodes, I like it. Yeah. yeah. They're in Coney Island. You know, they were in front of a store, they were sitting there eating and stuff. It was like a po. Oh, it was a postscript. It was after the credits. Oh, I didn't see oh, the after the credits. Oh, oh well, you should have stuck around because it was a reveal. Oh uh, wow! And okay. because you found out where two people wound up, and they wound up in California working at Fry's. Wow. Yeah. So, supermarkets to computers, galoshes to what else? Uh, what other companies are that way? Well, Tandy was started by uh, uh, Charles Tandy started a leather company and then That's bought. Right. And then bought an electronics store in Boston, and there, from that point, built Radio Shack. Oh, okay, yeah, and and there still is Radio Shack, isn't there? There's it one. is, but it's owned by a company called General Wireless, and they're down to only about seventeen hundred stores nationwide. There used to be about five thousand. That that many? I got yeah. one in Queens. See, I used to love. Yeah. Uh, Radio Shack. We have one on 125th Street, but I used to have nice Radio fan. Shack, and I'm yeah. sure I'm sure Rob did too. Oh yeah. Because every little thing that would hook every other thing together, you could buy there. Yeah. Now you go there, and it's hard to find exactly the thing you're. Well, looking now they for. sell radio control cars and hobby things and cell phones and and drones. And yeah, drone? we gotta get you a drone. They're looking. They used to have that wall. They sell drones now. Wall with every <laughs> possible connector. Yeah. That you could ever think of. That's oh. what I want more than anything else in the world is a drone. Okay. We're going to have to get and, you a drone. And, and I, you... I have the money to so go buy a drone, but I don't have anywhere to fly it. Because you can't fly Park? a drone in Manhattan. It's Not against the law. Huh? Central yeah. Park. No, it's against the law to fly a drone in Central Park. Well, Get a small yeah. enough one to fly around in your apartment. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I, 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 uh, GoPro just put coming out with one called the Karma, which is just great, and uh, 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 it's seven hundred ninety nine bucks. And you even get a case to put it in, and you get a remote control for it, and all. It's it's pretty pretty complete. And um, the only thing it doesn't come with is the camera. Uh, let me There's see. There's one here. by a company called E E Hans or something like that. It yeah. uh, comes with uh, a camera, and you operate it with your your iOS or okay. Android device. Let, uh, hold on a second. Let me tell somebody something. Paul Santorinios, I guess, is your name. Paul, what you've got to do is you've got to go up uh, to where it says contacts and go add contact. Okay, and that will get you. Uh, uh, in uh, it, it will allow me to make you a. Uh, uh, so why don't you uh, just answer him real quick? What you just call? send him a request like well, you did that fellow last week. Oh, you know who I think that is, Alex? He used to call your old show, I think. Huh? I think Paul, was that Paul who used to call your old show? No, I don't think so. No, no. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Paul, Paul, he, he's just calling again. Answer him real quick so then he can hear you. Uh, then... uh, well, when he calls again, maybe I'll do that. 
Uh, but what you got to do, Paul, is you've got to go up there to where it says contact, go add contacts, and ask me to recognize you as a uh, as a as a uh, as a contact, and then you can be part of the citizen panel. I could have answered you there. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, hold on a second. I want to see if I can do something here. Uh, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. I thought I could call him and, and wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. He's just asked to be accepted, and I've just accepted you. Uh, Paul, now so, you can call Paul. So now you can call Paul. Now you can call. I've, I've just accepted you. So you know what's crazy? They keep on talking about all these automobiles going to driver lists. And, uh, <clears throat> but I also saw something on uh, Facebook or something about would you let a drone fly mm -hmm. you to work? Uh, so, uh, uh, that's I a good it's, question. It's almost yeah. going to skip a step, I think. We're oh, not going to oh. go to auto autonomous automobiles we're going to go to drones hold on a second let me say hello to paul hello paul paul yeah uh, yeah you can hear me okay alex man uh who was it who recognized who i was uh, really you, you you all the truck driver no it was that tony it was tony no tony recognized him from your old show yeah what's up alex how you been man uh, good. Do you, I can hear you fine. I just I'm having trouble with my uh, settings. Do you have? A, can you turn your camera on? Can you click on? Can, what is he calling in on? What are you using? No, he's call. He's not calling in on an iPad. I can see if it is. Uh, but if you can, Paul, uh, it's click a on laptop. the laptop. Yeah, but click on uh, click on the uh, camera icon. Do you see the camera there? Not right now, guys, because I'm having trouble with the laptop. It's my wife's laptop. Oh, okay. All right. Skype. Yeah. So you know, there should be a camera uh, camera icon in the lower left hand side on Skype. Yeah. Uh, so is is he the truck driver? Yeah, I. He does not have a camera on my. Oh. Okay. Well, don't worry about it. There's it. a don't, delay. Don't worry about it. Just. There's a delay, man. I'm sorry. There's a freaking delay. Yeah. Just talk to us. You know. Um, uh, uh, what did you say, Jason? You wanted to ask Paul something? Is he the truck driver? That'd be me. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, uh, where are we? We were talking about drones. Have you ever heard of a company called Ehang? E-H-A-N-G? No. Google them. There's uh, something called the Ehang Ghost Drone 2.0. Uh, it comes with a camera. Mm -hmm. It is controlled by either your iOS or your Android device. You yeah. can watch videos on how these things fly for three ninety nine with a camera. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, you're you're making a little bit of noise moving stuff around there. So what I might suggest is when you're not saying something, you don't want to say something, just mute your microphone. You, you see where there's a microphone picture there? You can mute it. There you go, Paul. That's great. Thank you. Because there was a lot of noise coming from that, that uh, system. Anyway, uh, yeah, but you don't know what you're getting for that. Like the camera may not be a great camera. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I would in a second uh, take anything that would put, allow my GoPro to be on it. Okay. And... Um, I've got that pulled up now, Al. It says it's an AAV, an autonomous aerial vehicle. Yeah. Does it does it have GPS capabilities? It have because it's, yes, it's got six. It can fly on its own. It's got yeah. It's got six. Um, uh, you have to get up to six or eight satellites that it picks up before it'll do. And then it you can press a button and you can say come back and it automatically comes back. Well, to that you. that's what you want. You want uh, and I yeah, when cool. I looked at GoPro, they don't they don't say anything about that. But the fact is, you 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 don't want anything that's going to go take off and not come back with, you can, you, with a four hundred dollar camera hooked to it. Go to um, uh, go to YouTube and search some of the videos for that device and you see the beautiful stuff that they've done with it what's it called e-h-a-n-g e that's the name of the company e-hang e-hang ghost drone 2.0 wow let me write that down e-hang yeah but still even if i bought one of those i would have nowhere to be able to use it you know i almost the other day i almost pulled the trigger i almost bought it oh the e-hang yeah e-h-a-n-g and it's how much it's three ninety nine. Oh wow! With the camera, do you have access to your rooftop? 
Yeah, I have access to my rooftop. Yeah, it might not be legal for you to fly it, but who's going to stop you? Well, you, 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 you know, it's, um, I don't want to take the chance. I mean, if I had a car and I could just go out of, out in the country on weekends and whatever, i just find some fields somewhere or whatever and, and fly my little uh, drone and, and take pictures of everything and, and so on. With this e-hang, if you want, you can buy goggles that you put on and you can actually see from the drone's point of view as you're flying. Wow, that must cost extra. For, yes, that's about six ninety nine for those glasses. For the glasses alone? Glasses alone, but it, it you actually see what the drone sees as it's going. Wow. They're very cool. Wow. And, and <laughs> I was very impressed with this thing. I was like, I want to buy one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would love to have a drone, but, you know, I just, and as I say, I could afford it. I can, I can six ninety nine or whatever, seven ninety nine for the for the Karma, GoPro Karma is, is pretty, is not an expensive go for me. But uh, if I was going to use it, I just think I would sit here never yeah. being used. What am I going to do, fly it in the apartment? I guess I could. <laughs> Yeah, now you wouldn't get too much fun and, out of and that. And of course, they, I, everything I've read about it, I don't see anything about GPS on there. I want to know that thing's going to come back. Yep. You know, and all of these, most of these drones, like the Phantom and so on, if somehow it starts losing battery power or it starts losing a signal from the remote control, it immediately goes back to where it took off. That's right. You know. Okay, Alex, this one, you put waypoints on a map. Of where you want it to fly, and it will it will fly to that point, and then turn and go to the next waypoint, and then turn and go to the next waypoint, and then it comes back to the original point that you started. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. but how you did, know, how do they know if there's another drone in the vicinity it might crash into? They're all yeah, encrypted, but yeah. You know, that's something <laughs> that I haven't read anywhere. Like if it sees if it's going to crash into another drone, it goes the other direction. The odds of that happening are so minuscule. Of course, of course. But you know, at the present you, time, at the present time. Yeah. yeah. It, for for that to even be a possibility, there would be a, like a black cloud in the sky of drones. <laughs> well, yeah. Either that or somebody who's attacking your drone. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get one with a laser on it. You know, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take my drone and on its uh, little rotors, I'll put razor blades and then go up and take down other drones. Drone wars. Just like battle, just like battle bots. <laughs> like battle bots. Exactly. Yeah. I wonder in Washington, Washington D.C., how they keep drones from going over yeah. the White House. Yeah. I mean, they've got to have some kind of anti-drone system. We have another Jack person Williams. calling by telephone. Who? Who is this? Ralph. H who? Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. Have, have you called before, Ralph? Um, on the satellite, probably. On the satellite. I, I called Bob Shaw. I live in Virginia as well. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, you should go buy a tiny drone for $30 at Walmart. Learn how to fly it before you go and buy any other drones. Well, I'll tell you, this drone here, this, this, ghost, this ghost driver from Ehung, it won't let you fly it until, it won't let you. It won't let you do a complete flight until you've taken a bunch of pre-flight exams, and you. The, it, it actually teaches you to fly. Yeah, same thing with the Karma, the yeah. GoPro thing. It has a, a, a thing where you do do mock flights. Right. Well, no, it actually flies a drone, but it has a lot of limitations on it before it will let you have full access to it. And what do you get for thirty dollars at at Walmart or wherever? Well, I'd show you if I. Well, it has a Skype, but it's just, it's, it's cool, it's fun, you just fly it around the room, it's, you'll learn how to fly a drone. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, I mean, I want one you can put a camera on, because I want it to take pictures, that's the only reason I want it. Well, yeah, I understand that, you can get one of that too, but you might as well, for $30, learn how to fly the drone first, before you Is that one of those little styrofoam ones that you can buy a No, no, yeah, <laughs> these are really cool. <laughs> Can't fly yeah. it in the sunlight. By the way, the by the way, have you noticed how much how much drones are being used on TV right now in oh, news yeah. in newscasts? That's right. And yeah. I see it now being used in movies and things like that because <laughs> it's cheaper than hiring a helicopter. Do the New York City TV stations have permissions to use drones in Manhattan? You know, I don't know. 
I, Magic Call by the Ward, you can get like the Skyline. I do know that I saw some stuff from like Aleppo, and they're they're zooming over Aleppo, and I'm no, I'm saying to myself, it's not a helicopter, it's a goddamn drone. You can tell when it's a drone. It's smoother than a helicopter. <laughs> hey, has anybody heard? Has that hotel in Aleppo, um, Renee's family's hotel, been heard at all? I, you know, something she hasn't called to say anything about it. You know, I I typed in the hotel the other day, and it all it was was just the same thing that you guys looked up, you know, a couple of months ago. So. I think that was a good sign. Yeah, but, you know, do you really want to own a hotel in Aleppo? Man, if I owned a hotel in Aleppo, I'd want to get the hell out of there fast. You know? Yeah, but then somebody would buy it up at a dirt cheap price. Yeah. And then hopefully nothing happened, and then yeah, big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I brought up Hillary, and nobody even wanted to pick up on the, uh, on the, on the WikiLeaks stuff. What was it? Because I haven't really heard. Just the latest thing is here's the latest thing that Trump's on. Carlos Slim. Do you know who Clark, Carlos Slim is? See. Si. See. Si. He is probably at one point. I think Forbes had him as the richest man in the world. Uh, he is a uh, is a telecommunications, telecommunications Mexico guy, and um, he has minority stock in the New York Times. What is that? Somebody at the airport? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Um, but anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, he uh, owns a, a, a minority share of the New York Times. And, of course, Donald Trump hit up on this. Mexican billionaire. No, not just a Mexican billionaire, Donald. This guy could buy and sell you about 20 times. Okay? If not more so. Uh and so he's, so he's, he's going after Carlos Slim now. Right, he's going to sue the New York Times, so. Yeah, of course, of course. Just like he's going to sue all these women. Yeah. You know, one of these women said, they said, why didn't you come forward before? And she said, I didn't make a, a, want to tell uh, the world about it because I didn't want to get sued by this guy because he was so famous for suing people. You know. <laughs> didn't he sue Bill Maher for, for his joke? Yeah, about, for, uh, for a bit. If he, if his, he could say his mother was an orangutan or something like that. Yeah. And he, if he proved that his mother wasn't and he sued him, he said he'd give him millions of dollars. And because he was able to prove it with a birth certificate, yeah. he <laughs> sued him for the money. Sued him for the money. Yes. <laughs> I think he said he would give a million dollars if anybody yeah. could prove his mother was, wasn't, wasn't an orangutan. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, the thing is, you know, if you're, if you don't want to be sued, OK, you really don't want to be, especially by a guy with deep pockets, although he he claims he's going to sue more often than he ever does. His, his record of suing people is very minor, but he, he has a large bark that way. And so if you're some woman who just got groped by this guy, you're not going to turn around and tell the world about it because if you don't want to get sued by him because. Even if you're completely innocent and telling the truth and you can prove it and you got pictures and everything else, you're, you know, you're, you just don't, you, you don't want this guy suing. It's just going to cost you too much money to defend it. So um, that's, that's, that's the problem with that. The other thing is they said that he's not going to sue the New York Times because that means that he will be subject to discovery. That's right. Exactly. And he doesn't want that, you know. He doesn't it's want that. It's discovery to find out how much you're actually worth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> among other things. Yeah, Ralph, where are you calling from? Virginia. Virginia, okay. Uh, and, yeah, the and, same. My one of my cell phones is the same area code. Oh, really? <laughs> the five one seven. Five seven one. Five seven one or whatever. Uh, uh, t uh, tell me, what's the what's the mood like down in Virginia uh, about? the whole race. Uh, is it, uh, is it Trump world down there? What is it? It's everything world. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I like, know, like for instance, Rob, Rob. Rob, I didn't even yeah. ask you where, where, uh, what, where, how's your state going? Yeah, we're leaning, leaning blue. If you look at the map, like the, the uh, CNN map. Um, but, uh, you know, you, like I live in Loudoun County, and it's a you know it's a very red county. 
Yeah. It's a rural county. You know, I live in the uh, the easternmost portion of it. Um, and uh, it's, you know, because there's a lot of government here, it, it skews a little bit more uh, liberal. But Loudoun County in general is a very, you know, red county. It, it uh, is, you know, you see all the... You know, the you saw the Romney signs, you saw, you see, you don't see Trump signs, though. I haven't seen very many. Well, you know, Barbara Comstock signs all the, all over the place. Um, but I can respect her because you know, she's not supporting be, it, Trump. It could be because Trump doesn't really have the, uh, the blessing of the Republican Party, and there's not a lot of money being thrown his way. Yeah. Uh, maybe he can't afford the signage. Either that or they consider the state his. I can see one Trump sign. No, this is not his state. Uh, Northern Virginia is Northern Virginia's not for Trump. It, it Northern, uh, but if you, yeah, you're right. Northern Virginia skews, you know, like a city, more liberal. Um, if, you look, if you go to CNN.com and you look at the way the, uh, the electoral votes are going, this, this, the state of Virginia is... A light blue, which means it's leaning. Uh, it's leaning Democratic. Yeah. By the way, uh, R Ralph, are there people talking in back of you? What's that? Are there people talking in back of you? No. Ted, it's coming from Ted? Paul's. It, uh, oh, it's coming from uh, it's coming from Paul. Hello, Paul. Paul, can you hear us? Paul, can you? Alex, I can hear you, man. There's a lot. Of Back static on this. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, but what is all the noise in there? Is that TV set or what? Oh, it's coming from Paul. Hello, Paul. Oh, you've yeah, got you've got the, to you, get Paul. this to Alex. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm trying to Paul, get this. Alex, I can't hear you, man. What you've got? Paul, you got a live feed going on. Paul, yeah. you've got to stop the live feed. Are you on our website? Is that the okay, reason? Thing. It's you guys echoing. Yes, but here's why. Are you on? Uh, do you have your TV set? Uh, do you have your computer on gabnet.net? Yeah. At the very uh, get get off gabnet.net, okay? And just talk to us because uh, that's what's causing it. Uh, either that or, 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 or you see, women at, at the top of the page, Paul. Paul, at the top of the page, you can, there we go. Now, Paul, can you hear us okay? Ah, damn, there we go. Yeah, Alex. That, that's what it was. You, you just turn, turn, off the, turn off the feed is what you do. See, Paul, you tell him he has a button in the wrong spot. Oh, shut up, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, Paul, now you see you can hear us okay, right? A hundred percent, man. Appreciate the help. You know who this is now, right? I'm trying to remember. Everybody else seems to remember except me. Paul, you're married to a black woman, right? Hold on a second. All right, let's think a story for a minute, man. Oh, a story. Oh, okay, Paul. All right, Paul from Astoria. Of course. Jason had it right. Yeah. Jason, that's 100% right. Yeah, no, you know something? It was funny. It's because you're not talking into a phone, and I'm used to hearing your voice talking over a phone. You're talking 100%. through a microphone in your computer, and it's a, it's slightly a different sound. Plus, I have a photograph of you here on the screen, and right. I didn't ever imagine you looked like that. Hey, didn't you get hurt a while ago or something? Are you all right? Yeah, I had a big accident, you good now, or are you recovered? I'm or are you... fine, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I got cut off by a uh, car, and oh. it's a choice, either run them over or throw my car into the ditch, and, yeah, I so, took the second choice. You threw, oh, you threw the car into a ditch? My truck, my truck, yeah. Oh, jeez almighty. Yeah, 16 stitches across the knee, a whole thing. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah it was all right. Well, we so, got to do part of life. Yeah, but you're okay now. Yeah, I'm fine. 100% recovered. Did some physical therapy, you know. Yeah. Now, as I remember, you uh, you you were very politically to the left. I'm very left. You know that. Yeah, very left. <laughs> so this this whole thing must be driving you a bat shit. Oh, you have no idea. You have <laughs> no idea. I, I, my choices right now are a corporatist or a crazy motherfucker. Excuse my language. Yeah. But, Who's who? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. See, I have a question, though, about to, to the lefties out there. You know, I know, uh, what's his name? Paul Ryan is sitting there trying to concentrate on keeping, the, you know, keeping Congress to the right. So 
let's just hypothetically say Hillary Clinton gets voted in. And then the, the Congress and the Senate also gets voted to the left. Mm -hmm. Is there... Hold on a second. My wife's... Well, it, it, my, my wife's coming in to tell me I'm being too loud. Uh -oh. um, so whisper, whisper. let's just say Congress and the Senate also goes to the left. Mm -hmm. Is there what is there that they should do if we you know to stop us from rioting? If they if they don't do something, we're gonna riot. All right, let me let me take this one because the assumption is that by voting Democrats, you're moving the Congress to the left. That's a falsehood, because here in Pennsylvania, my choice is Jamie McKinney, right? Jamie, Jamie, whatever the heck her name is. Yeah. Who is the Democrat or Toomey, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I hate Toomey, so I'm going to vote for the person I don't hate, which is a corporatist in McKinney. She's is not left. McKinney? McKinney. It's McKinney or McKinney. I bet people have fun with that name. Yeah, so... You tell me what my choices here are as a lefty. I want single payer. I want expansion of the safety net. I want the things that we've been promised for freaking years by the Democrats. You know what I got? And Alex, you'll love this, man. Yeah. You know how I used to brag about my health care? Yeah. I was nice and cheap and it didn't change under Obamacare. You know how I was paying $680 and I had a $250 deductible? I had to take it. A silver plan, because my plan got phased out, it jumped up to thirteen hundred bucks, twelve thousand dollar freaking deductible, and guess what? I needed a surgery on my other knee. I went through more help to get the insurance to pay for that than my truck insurance paid for the other operation. It's it's amazing how they seem to I told you back then I was voting for this thing in hopes that it will destroy the healthcare system we have now. It is not destroying the health care system well, we have well now. You, but, Paul, you had to know that it wasn't going to destroy the health care system when the health oh, oh. insurance companies signed on to this deal. Yeah, true. You know, and endorsed it and said, okay, we're going along with Obama on this. The minute, that was the minute I knew that if there was something in it for them, it wasn't going to be that there was something in it for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be surprised at how many people, because, you know, you know I've always been left, uh, Alex. You and I have had arguments. You know that. Well, yeah, no, I'm to the I'm to the left, but you always used to feel I wasn't to the left enough. No, to me, yeah, to me, there's nobody to the left like me. I'm, I'm just, you know, just saying what it is. But a certain, <laughs> a certain person we both know. Paul um, brought up the thing that I was actually thinking about. If we actually get control of the the Congress and get control of the presidency, if we don't bring in, you know, universal health care, I, I think I'm going to be extremely pissed off. Yep. Jason, I agree you know something, though? I got to tell you, uh, I, I'm beginning to be of the belief that this country is never going to go for universal health care. And it's because we don't know any other way of doing business but the way we've been doing it. There is too much of a, of a, uh, 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 a business built up between the doctors and the insurance companies and the this and the that to ever see this thing beat out the lobbyists to get us some decent health care. But that's yeah. where you need to point out to everybody is the rest of the world does it a different way. And Why that's, are we that, right? That's fine. They got, you know, he, the, the most uh, uh, universal system probably in the world is the British health system, okay? And the reason they have it is that after World War II, when you know, Britain had been completely decimated and so on, and they had to rebuild. They decided, and this is the way it was described, that they owed themselves a gift. And that gift was their health care system. And it became a health care system just like you and I would love it to be. You go to the hospital, you have whatever has to be fixed, fixed, and there's nothing you sign when you leave to show that you can pay for it. Because there's no paying for it now doctors make out okay in in the uk what the doctors make doctors out okay make in the UK. about uh 250 to start year, about two a uh, two hundred thousand i heard but maybe it could be 250 to start and then now and, and this is the interesting part about it you are given raises based on your quality of service are they government employees uh 
I don't. Kind of. Kind of. Semi, semi. Semi. But you you're, are, you're, you're given raises based upon the quality of service and the results that you get for your patients, which incidentally is what Medicare is now trying to do in this country. It's, not, it's to stop paying doctors based on services, but based on results. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Here's the thing, um, and I think this is the most important. When we talk about doctors, you have to specify that it isn't all doctors. We seem to have a two-tier system of doctors here. One, ones that became doctors to be doctors, because that's what they wanted as a career, that's what they felt their calling was. And you have ones that got into it for the money. As I told you, because of my accident. Specialists. And, exactly. Well, here's, here's <laughs> what I'm trying to get to right now. I had the rectal colon surgery. You remember that a while back, right, Alex? Yeah. And Jason? Mm -hmm. Okay. That specialist still sees me to today. Yeah. Okay. That man was pro Bernie Sanders. Yeah. He is pro single payer. Wow. Fights for it, donates to anyone who's willing to put it. His exact words were, I'm being driven out by this new insurance system, being forced to join a big hospital chain and be part of them because I cannot afford to be within this insurance system. I'm like, what are you talking about? Here's Obamacare. And he, very specific, he's an Indian guy, he voted for Obama twice. And he told me, I, I can't believe that they did this. This is a doctor, the guy that did my knee surgery on the, on the left knee. Mm -hmm. Another guy that, exa exactly the same words, they all for single, I'm trying, my wife, a nurse, her friends, all nurses. I'm trying to figure out who are these doctors that are not pro single payer. My, 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 my uh, you know, the physician we have, the family physician. Yeah. She too is sick and tired. She shows me her Medicare payments that are that are pretty nice. She's got I gotta actually take a picture of that and post it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the insurance checks for ninety nine cents from my Blue Cross Blue Shield for off, for hospital visits that they refuse for office visits that they refuse to pay the full amount for. Ninety nine cents. She's like, it is it wasn't even worth for her to deposit these checks. I'm just trying to figure out who the heck this for-profit system benefits right now. It's nice. Well, I'll give you, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you an example with me. Um, uh, you know, Medicare is my primary, and my mm -hmm. secondary is Oxford because my wife has insurance at work. And the only thing Oxford really does for me is prescription medicine. That, that lowers the price on that. But on everything else, that other 20% that supposedly they should be taking care of, they don't take care of it. We've got a thousand dollar deductible. I've never gotten to that point. Yeah. You know, family so, a thousand or individual. Individual. Wow. No, or maybe it's family. I don't know, but I never got to a thousand. Okay, in any given year, and so I'm winding up having to pay money. Uh, my feeling is, if uh, Medicare is my primary, and my secondary is Oxford. They should be paying. What the fuck? I mean, uh, uh, Medicare's paying eighty percent of it. If I just had Oxford, they'd have to pay the eighty percent. You know what I'm saying? Can you pick up a prescription drug plan and just dump your secondary? Well, why should I dump my secondary because when you're not paying for that? Because That's we're why. not paying for it. Yes, Jason, your hand is up. So some people might look at what I'm going to say my amounts are and be jealous because they're not. They don't have to pay this little. And I understand, you know, my bitch might be a lot, you know, might be nitpicky compared to what other people have to pay. But also remember, I'm union and maybe you should be too. But my insurance is going up to $255 a month for this next year. But there's another, and that's going to be a, a $1,200 deductible. So the first $1,200 that I spend, you know, in healthcare bills is going to be out of my pocket. I, before it was $750 a year. For the last three years, I haven't even met that. So this next year, I'm debating about switching over to this other plan that's only $90 a month. But I have to pay the first $2,500 before my insurance kicks in. And I'm kind of debating about doing it because I've never met the other deductible before, so why shouldn't I? Well, I, you, know, you know what I often wonder is why, for instance, at somebody at my age, Medicare is only 80%. Why isn't it 100%? You know, insurance. Even my insurance, when it kicks in, it's only 90%. 
you know, if if you're if you're over uh, uh, 65 and you can get Medicare, and you want to get secondary insurance, you get something like AARP, which is through United Health. Everything's through United Health. Even Oxford, which I have, is United okay. Health, and um, uh, uh, you pay for that for that secondary. Uh, here, I'd pay about 250 bucks a month for just me alone. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Retired. for the secondary to take care of that that twenty percent that Medicare won't take care of. That's kind of what I'm paying for me and my wife. A little more than Rob, that. Rob, Rob, I don't know if you heard me before. You too, Jason. You're, you are. I'm going to say you are nitpicking. Don't don't get insulted, man. I used to have, and he knows because I bragged on Sirius when he was on Sirius. I bragged up on my health insurance. Yeah. I used to have a two hundred and fifty dollar deductible, yeah. family deductible. Wow. Okay. Most right people. now, my deductible is twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Family, Jesus. where are you getting 30. your? Where were you getting your insurance out of France? <laughs> well, the one I had. Well, oh the my one. You know, my plan. I, I was in that plan with my trucking company, with with my wife. Like, you know, I had a group plan that worked out great for everybody. That group plan got killed. That group plan. I, I'm not even a joke. Right now, one thousand uh, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. And it's thirty-seven fifty, three thousand seven hundred and fifty individual deductible. Wow. And my premium is now thirteen hundred dollars, up from freaking five hundred eighty bucks. Man. So pay to just put that money in the bank every month and not do it. But it, <laughs> it, it, see, and that's what I'm saying. Even what's it's mine, you know. Well, so, um, so what, what are we saying? Let's cut to the chase on this. Thing. this what is kind of fucking country do we live in? Here. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. I better. I better. I want to change my picture here a little bit so people can see everybody. Uh, That's what I'm saying. What kind of fucking country are we living in that doesn't take care of its people? I mean, if you don't have this money, you lie by the side of the road and die, or you have to go find some doctor who's working pro bono doesn't really give a shit about you. You know? I mean, uh, what what? What have we done here? What kind of ugly people a have crony, we become? A crony capitalist system made for the very few. The rest of us get screwed. And I'm going to say this again, and you know this, uh, Alex, I'm pretty damn close to a communist. I'll settle for socialism. Man. Well, I mean, I I, I, I'll never become a communist because I think uh, the communist system is imperfect, but uh, I'd be a so I'm, I am a socialist, you know. Uh, it, but... I just, you know, I just, I don't understand it. There isn't a civilized country in this world, uh, one of the, the, you know, the superpowers, that doesn't have universal health care except for us. I mean, there's one other country that doesn't. You know which country doesn't have it? And it's China. amazing to me. China. You would think it's a communist country. They have free isn't medicine for everybody. Part of what the United States is supposed to do is look out for the health and welfare of its citizenship. Yeah. You would think. Yeah. But, you know, it, it killed me when I saw a documentary about uh, Doctors Without Borders actually had to set up in uh, Tennessee. You know, do you think Doctors Without Borders is going to other countries? They were in our country. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. But, I, you know. Um, but uh, we're right. The rest of the world is wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't understand it, but I also don't think we're ever going to see it. Because we've just we've gone past that tipping point where all of a sudden tomorrow we want to go universal health care, right? We want to go so completely socialized medicine. How do we do it? How do we change the whole system and the way Medicare in which, for all? Well, yeah, and and, and that, that's that's all well and good, but the the infrastructure isn't in place to do that, you know, overnight. Like you know, January first, Medicare for all. Well, I can I tell you, it is. Oh, I I tell you, and, Obamacare and because, infrastructure wasn't in place. What? I was part. I, Obamacare infrastructure wasn't in place. It had to be built. But what? What did he build? Really? He, you know, they the built, only... it, no, they built built very elaborate com, uh, net, uh, computer networks and websites and a whole. Sit, believe me, I, I I worked on some of those exchanges, the health exchanges in in New York, in um, Vermont. Uh, I worked on those exchanges. The, the best one in the country was Connect, K Y N E C T, and Bevan wants to destroy it. Our new governor wants to tear it down. Oh, you guys in Kentucky, never mind. You, you guys about, in Kentucky. 
You hear about Obamacare, and and it's the federal plan that really blows. Any city, like Florida has one, New York has a health care, a uh, health exchange, Vermont has one. People, states that are more blue decided that they wanted to build their own exchange, and they get better rates. It's when you have to deal with the federal plan that it sucks, totally Rob, sucks. Here, here's, here's the thing, though. States like New York, and um, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I'm born and raised in New York. I don't have to keep saying this, right? Um, I've grown up in New York, and there's, there's, there was already infrastructure. Like, you could go through the city and get cheap health insurance. I've had friends who didn't make enough money who would go declare less than $250 income. Declare. You don't even have to prove it. And you would actually get health care. You would get the city health care insurance. You go to any hospital, any doctor accepted. It. it wasn't really that hard to transition into a free market. What I think you're trying to allude to, and I, I could be wrong, uh, you're trying to say that in order for us to go back right now, all this money is in, pri in private hands, and, and it's going to be hard to take that money back from private hands and put it into the government. No, Maybe no. I'm wrong. No, all I'm saying is that because Alex said, you know, we don't have the infrastructure. Well, I meant Alex. I'm sorry. I meant that's well, what Alex well, okay. said. Here's, here's what I'm saying. <laughs> you have a whole medical industry that's been created and has not been based on uh, socialized medicine. You'd have to begin with. You'd have to completely convert that mindset. You know, it was, okay, it was easy for Britain when the whole country had been literally destroyed, right? And they were rebuilding to rebuild as part of it universal health care, okay? And, and France, it's the same thing. You know, I mean, we've never had the tragedy of having our country decimated, but if it were decimated, maybe we could put in health care once well, we rebuild. That's you know? what I was alluding to the other night regarding the, the TV show that uh, Kiefer Sutherland stars in where yeah. the, everything is blown up. Start all over again. and Designated survivor. By the way, that that's show great. that show has surprised me. That's a much better show than I thought it could be. Yeah, I agree. It's a very good show. Good. Yeah. Pretty good. You know? Um, just, just to that one comment about blowing the whole thing up. Yeah. I really don't think so because we do have a neighbor in the north that went from a private health care system to a single payer system, not socialized medicine, mind you, because it's single payer. Uh, the doctors, the hospitals are all privately owned. They're not, uh, you know, government owned. They're not socialist. How right. long ago did they do that? Yeah, but also smaller, smaller country, smaller population. A lot easier to change things there if you want to. Yeah. But yeah, everything I, is smaller. Well, you when know, it the, started the in Canada, Alex, smaller. when it started in Canada, it started in one province, Saskatchewan. Yeah started their single payer system and then it went nationwide because it was so successful. I thought that's yeah, what they're right. hoping for here was Vermont was going to go for a universal health care and it was going to spread to the rest of the country. Well, you know, what? in England, there are private doctors and you can be a private doctor and people will have to pay for the, your services. Okay. And usually they're pretty shitty ones. And you No, usually they're pretty good ones who, who appeal to rich people, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, although I'll tell you, I was in, when I was in France in Alberville, I got strep throat and I had to go to a doctor. So they sent me to the hospital and the hospital wouldn't see me because I wasn't a, uh, uh, a what do you call it? A, uh, a citizen. They said, you have to go to a private doctor. So I said, where do I, where do I find one? And they gave me an address of one. And I, I went to this private doctor and his office was so shabby and it was like, Oh, good! Somebody's coming to see us, <laughs> you know. And it was it was kind of pathetic. And I remember it cost me the equivalent of twenty five dollars to you know get him to decide that I had to have an antibiotic, and that was it. And you know he worked fine, but I was just amazed at how pathetic his little office was. Um, so that you know, uh, but I, I I just think you're going to have a hard time going against all the lobbies and all the doctors in this country are used to making, you know, half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year, whatever they make. There are some doctors who are not making that now because uh, there are certain doctors who, uh, the, and it's really more the insurance companies than Medicare. 
I mean, I had a doctor who told me he loves doing business with Medicare because he, he files a claim and three weeks later he gets paid. You file with an insurance company and about six months later, if you're lucky, you get paid. And they run you through the ringer. Yeah, and all, also only what they authorize. And if you're, you have to be in network to get a certain amount and blah, 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 blah. Well, well you know, Alex, I think with specialists, if we have universal health care, then you can get more clientele. Well, here's what we have to do. We have to go back to pre-Reagan. Because prior to Reagan, insurance companies were non-profit. They were not allowed to be for-profit. And it was Reagan that took them into the profitability area. And that's what started to ruin insurance for people. At that point, it was still very, you know, even given the times and how much the dollar was worth at that time, it was very reasonable. It was one of the cheapest things you paid out. That's and, right. and bosses and companies would give you insurance without even thinking twice about it. Even it was a way I of attracting people. With, when I started with my job, I'm only 36 years old. When I started with my job, I was 20. I didn't have to pay for health care. Right. And then as the years went on, you had to start contributing to your health care plan, right? Yeah. And, and that's yeah. probably because, you know, they, they became, they got less out of that nonprofit mindset. And we've got to get them to go back to be nonprofit. A lot of companies, like my company, self-insures. And it's managed by you and too. But it's, they self-insure these days because they don't want to pay the, the uh, premiums. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would have to be a gradual transition, Alex. I think that's what everybody's kind of saying. It'd have to be a gradual transition. And that's one of the things that I've heard Hillary talk about is that, you know, Obama wanted the public option when, when they were formulating ACA and they couldn't get that passed through Congress. No, that's, Vernon, that's the other thing I wanted to, you, when you talked about Saskatchewan, the actual Canadian plan started with a public option and the choice for the provinces to go uh, single payer, right? What Saskatchewan did was use the single payer system singularly, solo, that's it. They just took that option and took the federal money from and the state money combined it and created a single payer. The problem with what Vermont, why Vermont couldn't do it, Vermont couldn't get the funding from the federal government it needed to add to the state money to create a single payer system. The problem was the funding of Vermont. That's why it didn't well, happen. Here, here's the bottom line. The easiest answer would be because we already have the infrastructure existent is just Medicare for all. Medicare for all, yeah. You know, but uh, just try to get that passed and just watch what happens with the AMA lobby and the insurance company lobby. Because oh, yeah. It would put all the insurance companies out of business. But you yeah. know what? There's not too many Republicans, once they turn 65 years old, turn down their Medicare. So that's what I just say, Medicare Part E for everybody. And once the people realize what they got, they're not going to turn it down. Well, I mean, yep. I, I'm, I have Medicare, and I uh, accept that it only goes to 80%. It's fine. You know, the yeah, only you can thing buy is, private insurance to do the other 20%. There are some doctors that will not take Medicare any longer. And, well, and if girl, that's all there is, they're going to take it or they're going to go out of business. girlfriend had one that wouldn't take Medicare all of a sudden, and I told her, well, then fuck him. Find another doctor. You know, if he, if he wants to lose your business, he's going to lose your business. I mean, it, it's, it, it's just... Uh, what are we going to do? You know, I mean, it, it, we, we should be at, uh, it, we did have easy medical care back when I was younger. And, and you even remember it, Jason, where you didn't pay for your insurance at work, you know? And now when I was at Sirius and I, just before I left, I think maybe for Marjorie and I, I was paying 300 bucks a month. That's what I'm saying. If we take over the Congress and the Senate and the presidency and we don't get universal health care, that's why I brought up the topic and it hasn't changed well, off I, of that. I think the only place that, uh, that Paul would disagree riot. with you is he'll probably just say storm the barricades and fuck it. No. <laughs> exactly. Just, fuck, just full guns blazing, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, but I, I tell you something, Alex. You, you brought up Reagan, right? Yeah. You also, you also remember that one little law that he passed in order to get Democrats to sign along? Because Democrats back then said if we make the insurance companies for profit, it will it will raise the rates to a point where most people will not have insurance, where most employers 
would not provide health care for their employees. Right. And Reagan said, well, we'll just make it so that hospitals have to take care of anyone who comes in regardless of insurance status. They have to give you stable. Hey, I forget what the hell listen, the name of Paul, the is. Paul, we've run out of time. Yep. You know, even on the internet, we run out of time. I thank <laughs> you, Paul. Wonderful. Please call us again. You're great. I, you know, you're terrific. I, I will. I will, Alex. My problem is your your nights and and, and my schedule was conflicting. I, I'm off Fridays and Saturdays now. I take those nights off, so I will be giving you a call. Man. Please, absolutely. All right. Scott, thank you for calling. It. Scott's hardly said anything tonight, Oof. but uh, he looks good in that square. Rob, hey. thank you for being with us and. Uh, 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 Ted, you still there? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Ted. Ralph, thank you. Uh, Anthony right. Magno, thank you. Jason, thank you. And Vernon, thank you. Thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. Good panel tonight. Go buy a drone. <laughs> Go buy a drone. Just a little one. Just a little drone. Trust Thanks, me. everybody. Like I really appreciate it. Let me get rid of them so that uh, the next show can use the line. And that next show, of course, is the intersection with Jack and Amy. And they'll be here on uh, most of this same uh, GabNet station, uh, uh, entertaining you and uh, taking your calls just like we do. Uh, but I want to thank you all. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, to the TV audience, thank you, too. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Alex Ben. If you see her, yeah, tell her I love her, okay? Okay, everybody, the TV people, I want to say goodbye to you once again. Don't forget we're on uh, Tuesday through Fridays at uh, 10 o'clock at gabnet.net. That's it. Have a nice weekend. Bye.